Where are you, lizard? Where'd you go? Oh, don't you rear up at me, cocky lizard. If you hope to stay on the life trajectory you're on, Well, I'm in the Australian outback. I'm chasing the roaring, leaping lizard. He's a beautiful specimen with huge eyes. <laughs> oh, Steve Irwin. He was quite a guy. I love that. <laughs> the, the, the style of his show. <laughs> well, I'm in the Australian outback with huge eyes and teeth. <laughs> oh. I got a cup of tea ready. I uh, hadn't felt good at all in the last, have not felt well in the last uh, about two weeks now. I really hadn't been able to work as much as I've wanted because ow, I could have done without that uh, it uh, super severe pain and uh, it's been raining out here being uh, other stuff Oh man, I broke my damn. Yeah, a lot of pain. And uh, what else? I found out that finally, this. Uh, there was a black snake out here. It crawled right underneath here and under there, and it was a young one. It's like. Uh, yeah, but he crawled under there. And I was sitting out there. I thought, man, he crawled right under my legs, a young black snake. And uh, I let him go. I was like, well, ordinarily I used to just kill all snakes just for the hell of it. Just because I don't, well, I'm not so scared of them. I just don't like them. And, and he could easily, there's plenty of holes. What I don't want to have happen is uh, to have him uh, crawl up. Uh, underneath there somewhere and then end up in bed with me some night that just annoy the hell out of me you know um because i've already had uh the palmetto bugs or i beat them back uh boric acid and then this poison here uh, i think it's ortho or whatever I, sp I have to spray about once a week and make a barrier around the whole damn thing or they'll they come in and over i'll still see one occasionally they're huge uh, you know just disgusting roaches and they're i think the snakes actually eat those too but anyway i gave the snake a pass i normally don't kill stuff i used to hunt the hell out of stuff when i was a kid we me and my brothers or well, one brother anyway we just arm with fully automatic weapons that just go on killing sprees you know <laughs> if it moves kill it son you know and then i just quit all of that uh but uh yeah i gave that black snake a pass you know it uh so it crawled under here then i went and i sat over there it's a you know a fresh new young one and uh i was sitting over there and a uh, man smoking extreme close up Airplane. Oh, it's a helicopter. Loud one. Piece of shit engine. Sounds like the exhaust manifolds aren't really working too well or they're not gapped right. But uh, yeah, so anyway, you come under here, black snake. I went over there and then he crawled under my legs over there and I thought, snake, you're pushing your luck. Because they have a path that they go on, you know, a hunting path. I've noticed that uh, near my mom's house, the same black snake can crawl by the same path by my feet every day. And uh, didn't kill him either yet. 
because they eat mice and stuff. I bet he was eating those palmetto bugs, too. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure I think so, though. But, uh, they're not really dangerous, but I had uh, a green snake one time. I picked one up when I was a kid, and it bit me. And it, they, a lot of snakes have, uh, evolution has given them bacteria in their little teeth, you know. They're not poisonous or anything, but it'll cause an infection. It started uh, an infection running up my arm, and then I had to lance that infection with a razor and pour alcohol in it to, because it was running up my arm, you know, towards my heart. <laughs> and uh, flora and fauna. It's a regular. I'm looking like Darwin, the photographs of, of Darwin with this beard. So we can postulate that the snake developed from millennia of crawling on his belly. And his mammal mouse <laughs> prey. The mice were a thing too. At one time, uh, I had named the damn mice in here field blight getting in there. Now poison worked. And I don't like poisons because they, uh, you know, you got a mouse body. It stinks, and uh, I just don't like having poisons around. But with the palmetto bugs, th that's all you can do. So I, I put out the mouse ate the mice, <laughs> plural of mouse. The mice, they ate up like uh, four trays. There was a bunch of them. If you got one mouse, that means you got a hundred. And uh, I can imagine that cartoon when I was a kid, where the mice were like. Playing La Cucara, La Cucara, Speedy Gonzales, La Cucara, and you know while the guy, the cat's trying to sleep. But uh, so the poison got rid of the mice, but they ate four huge trays of uh, rat poison. And uh, now there's a half a tray left. They were everywhere, up in the ceiling. It was crazy. And then uh, that only, I let them go for a year because uh, I. Uh, uh, a few, this was a few years ago I was uh, drinking it was just so you know depressingly disgusting I could see three or four mice running around the floor at night and just watch them you know, I named them actually <laughs> that's how much there was there but then the palmetto bugs you know they don't fly but what they do if you pick them if you pick them up and one of them scratched my hand I got an infection uh but if you pick them up, they actually, they're like little acrobats. They dive, and then they can flip and twist, and and they can make their bodies 100% flat. I find the palmetto bugs all the time now, but they're stoned on the poison on their way out. They're, because normally you can't approach them. You come anywhere near them. And... Uh, they sense changes in air pressure and they're fast, they go away. But lately, bugs will just be sitting there like, Hey man, what's happening, dude? You know, I'll come up and go, You're a palmetto bug right on top of them. I could smash them. And they're, they're just like, Hey man, I'm crawling on your wall, baby. You know? I mean, they're really obviously stoned. So, anyway... Um, found out my friend Jordan, uh, she, so I can at least be clear for posterity's sake, she, uh, shot herself, presumably in the head. I just had, I wanted to know, you know, to get closure. None of her damn, I wrote 20 of her Facebook friends, finally after waiting and being really cautious and polite, I just wrote them all and said, what happened, I need to know what happened to Jordan. I just need some more closure. I want to know what happened, how it happened, everything about it you can know, you know. And uh, one of her, her best friend, the one, she didn't <clears throat> leave the Bible to the girl. Her best friend, who was her neighbor, geographics, uh, geography, her best friend, who was her neighbor, helped her mom clean out her apartment and her mom, Jordan's mom, gave her friend the Bible. But she did commit suicide. And I'm one of those people, you know, with me, I respect that. But, uh, I definitely respect that. It's the kind of deal where, uh, 
what do I want to say about that? I think everybody has the right to end their own life, you know, especially if they're in pain and stuff like that. Um, not really sure on that one. As far as I think, yeah, I just think everybody has the right at any time to end their own life. I would say, though, for somebody that young, this would be like a, you know, a year-long waiting period. Um, and then even, you know, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of just getting up. I'm sort of hazy. But, uh, yeah, I'm not one of these people that, uh, that was her business and I respect that shot herself, you know. Presumably in the head. It's a uh, very Hemingway. I, I admire that. I admire the style of it. <laughs> Takes a lot of nerve to pull that trigger. I guess the thing that annoys me about it is, uh, to be honest, I. Uh, she was real smart, and we were kind of. We'd go back and forth on some pretty intellectual stuff. I guess the thing that, that makes me feel weird about it or annoyed about it is I feel like she she figured out some sort of total uh, um, equation of life that I didn't figure out. She came to like a start conclusion that I had never figured out because she's smart. If she's just an idiot, I'd be like, well, that's an idiot that committed suicide but because she's smart. It makes me feel like she figured out something really brilliant about stuff that I just didn't, didn't ever figure out, you know. But, uh, no, that's one of those things. Um, some people never find their place in this world. I'm probably one of those in a way. But sometimes it's about carving out a place, you know, making it work. Uh, those are loud sprinklers, so... Anyway, uh, I just, you know, for me, it never did work out for her. There was a lot of pressures on her, you know. I mean, a young kid, drug addict, alcoholic, uh, you know, all the troubles of a young, pretty girl, and uh, her parents just didn't get her at all. <clears throat> a lot of stuff boils down to financial support, you know. They cut off their financial support. The best I can tell, she was, I think, working as like a, you know, one of those scantily clad waitresses somewhere. And, you know, that kind of stuff leads to... God only knows what, you know. Well, I mean, a lot of that stuff leads to prostitution in the end. I never met a girl yet that, that, that was honest, that, you know, had, uh, I never met a woman yet. That's why I like Mia so much. She's the first one to admit it. You know, she's a prostitute, but I, I mean, every woman, they go through this phase of uh, feeling real clever and good about themselves for sort of uh, saying stuff like I love you and I do so that they can make some extra cash and have a place to stay for free and not have to keep a regular job so you know I don't know but it just kind of after doing a lot of poking around it seemed like she was uh... <laughs> I'm telling you all women are prostitutes <laughs> and uh, suicide is a fine idea very Hemingway. When you're done, you're done. I don't think anybody should have the right to tell you, tell you you're not done. Especially if you've thought about it for a number of years, you know, and you're ready. And if you're sick and in pain, definitely, you're done, you know. But, uh... Well, you know, for me, I mean, I know my time is limited. That's a that's a given. Well, it uh, one thing is uh, it's helped me to sort of live and do all of this music and stuff, like because I know I'm living out the last you know years or days of days. Your days are numbered, amigo. 
uh, days of my life and it uh, it really helped me to, to put a fire under me to do some stuff to let people know I was here at all. I mean, that's kind of the shit thing about it. I feel like uh, that, uh, you know, with her that nobody will even know she was here. And I know you can keep their memory alive and all of that, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 you know, a young person that died for no reason. It's, it's hard to come to grips with. I've had a hard time, but uh, so, so it is, you know. But yeah, you know, live every day like you're dying, you know, like it was your last day. Uh, that has been what I've been doing for the past year or so, and it, uh, it's, it's useful. Um, Is that lizard back? Yes, he is. Now he run away. They're all over the place around here. Never had one of them. Had him try to bite me. Didn't work out for him. Right. <laughs> He's really not showing up too well. Let me see if I can get right in on you, amigo. I'm here <laughs> hunting the lizard with his huge eyes and horrible teeth. I could take a bite right out of you, mate. Crikey.